welcome back to RC Icons. So in this video, yes, another unboxing. But this one's different. This is a first for the RC Icon Studio. In a year and a half of filming, in all of the cars that I have, this is a first. And it literally took 10 weeks to get to me from Japan. Long story. We'll get into it as we're opening the box. Let me bring the camera over. We'll get into this one. So, a couple of videos ago, a couple of unboxings ago, you saw that black piece of tape on the box. Blackship.com. So this is a buy e buy and it was a killer deal. Um, there's only one kit in here. But it's an illegal kit, prohibited, so to speak. So Japanese shipping companies, or the Federals, the Federales in Japan have decreed that it's illegal to ship oil, grease, prohibited items via air. And I got into this in the last black ship video. And this particular car kit is a prohibited kit. I'm turning the box. It is a prohibited kit. It's against the law. Can't ship this one. And of course, I didn't know this when I bought it on Baiyi. It was just a killer deal. So I bought it. And I always told myself I would never go down this road again. But for me, it's really a shelfer. Um, I don't know that I would ever attempt running it. Although you never know. Never say never. So this came up on auction and I ended up winning it for $124. Super deal. And then I got hit with, for those of you that use Baiyi, I got hit with the email. Your package contains prohibited items, in which case I usually just reply, please remove prohibited items and ship remaining. Which means they take out the oil and the grease. Not a big deal. If you're if you're a guy that builds kits, you don't necessarily need the original oil and grease. Just use your own oil and grease. Well, this one was kind of a big deal. Because the, pro pro the prohibited items were... Ding, ding, ding. Nitro motor. <laughs> they wanted to take the motor and the gas tank out of this. So this is the Ford Focus WRC. Ford XB expert built nitro touring car. So this is brand new, never run. And uh, and they wanted to pull a friggin' motor in the gas tank, even though the gas tanks never had fluid in it. And I was like, no way, that's not happening. So I shipped it to Black Ship, which is another shipping company in Japan that you can sign up for and they give you a Japanese address and they ship your box by you ships it to black ship and black ship in turn ships it add spec sport in turn ships it to you the only problem is when black ship went to ship it to me the first time so it was like 60 bucks to ship it across Japan then it was $103 shipping the first time, and I chose Japanese Post because that's what Baiyi uses 90% of the time, and I knew I would have it in like three days. Well, Japanese, Japan Post x-rayed the box and saw the motor and sent it back. So then it was like, now I have Black Ship telling me that I have to pull the motor, right? And I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So Raddy, who's in the TRF group, lives in japan was actually going to take delivery of it and ship it to me 
But after talking with customer service at Black Ship, I think it was Meredith, super nice lady, um, did an awesome job helping me. She's like, if try sending it FedEx Japan fastest way possible. It probably won't get x-rayed. It's just going to get pushed through. So the first 103 for Japan Post, if the package gets returned because of a prohibited item, you that's on you. So so 60 some odd dollars to ship it across Japan, 103 to have it turned around and sent back, and then another 150 to send it three-day FedEx Japan. After 10 weeks, I finally got my car with the motor <laughs> and everything that it's supposed to have. So in the box has an aerial, an extra aerial, because there's already one on here, and then it's got add spec sport directions it's got a little picture of the motor something in japanese and then the crystal tags and that's it um things heavy oh and then it also came with a tamiya glow plug heater and fuel filler so that was brand new that was part part of the package when it was being sold so I bought this really just for a shelf queen because I love the Focus RS. This is one tenth scale, so no different than if it was on like a TTO2 or whatever, uh, size wise. But when you pop the hood, so yeah, I'm into this car for like four hundred and thirty dollars now. So my hundred and twenty four dollar steal is gone. <laughs> the body is absolutely perfect. Not a lifted decal, nothing. And for those of you that have ever done this body, it's just dusty. Um, it's not an easy one. So they cut, obviously, the window out on the nitro because that's right where the exhaust is in the motor. So to let air in for that nitro motor. It's the smallest fuel tank I've ever seen. <laughs> and then that's your nitro. Super cool. I think it, it's, it's basically like a TT01 Nitro. I mean, it looks exactly the same or like a TB01 Nitro. Um, super, super cool. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to run it. <laughs> I'm going to have 100 Nitros before you know it. Nitros can be a huge pain in the ass in my climate. It's just the way they are. Um, our weather just goes crazy. Um but yeah, this thing is neat. I'm loving it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. That fuel has never, ever been in this. It's got the primer on it. I think the Tamiya ones actually run pretty good. It's a tiny little motor. I don't know what it is. It's a TM4. Is that right? No, FS12S. So it's the FS12S, um, for those of you that know Tamiya Nitros. It's got a nice little uh, clutch bell on there. Four-wheel drive. Diffs feel great. So who knows? We may see it ripping around a little bit. Should probably try it once. And then I don't know what is the... In oh, it came with an extra antenna? Yeah, it came with an extra antenna. Nothing wrong with that. I wonder if one's longer than the other. Well, they're the same. Bop, 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 bop. Ging, ging, ging. Right? That's what they sound like. Oil-filled shocks. I don't know if there's any oil in them. But yeah, there's not a mark on it. The thing was brand new, and I saw that it was brand new. And I think I was the only bidder at 124, and that's I was just like, Wow. Um, so yeah, I was excited about it. And then it was like a shipping freaking nightmare. I thought I was, I'm like, I'm the woman's like, well, do you want us to just throw it away? I'm like, F no, <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> I mean, Raddy was like, have them take the motor apart. And I'm like, cause you can ship, you can't ship combustible combustion engines. That's what it was. And you can't ship fuel tanks. Even if they've never been used. So Raddy's like, if you take the motor apart, then you're shipping motor parts. And you can ship motor parts, but you can't ship the motor whole. 
And I was like, I really don't want to get into rebuilding the motor. Oh, that's not good. Someone left batteries in it. And that's like the worst thing you can do. Because they start getting all funky. Not to mention setting, with it being set up like this, you're just asking for a runaway. Because what happens is these batteries control the receiver. And if the battery dies and you lose signal and the throttle is open, then that's it. It's over. It's taken off on you. Um, which we were notorious for back in the day, right? With uh, when we were running four double A's to run our receiver as kids. But it's even worse with a nitro. So usually there's a fail safe or a kill switch in there. If you don't know nitro, um, they'll put, you can wire in a kill switch so that if the receiver lose signal, it automatically kills the car. Um, I don't know how it does that, but it does it. So I may rewire this with a lipo, a small lipo that's going to fit in here to run the receiver instead of four double A's and then uh, we'll have to look into putting a kill switch on there but I don't know we'll see if I decide to run it at the very least I'm taking those things out because they start leaking acid and then everything goes to crap so that's the first nitro for RC icons and it is a sweet one small one but sweet we're tossing those garbage so you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments what you think the rs is just an awesome awesome rig and i've always wanted one like you know i've got causies um glenn bought an rs and did it in the uh bp oil livery and the thing is awesome Gavin has an RS in this livery on his TTO2 SRX, the new one there. I think it's the SRX. And he just had it on his 2023 recap show, and the thing looked awesome. And I was just like, wow. Mine was, I'm not, mine was sitting in my room, and that's what prompted me to do this video tonight. It's like, I got to get that thing out. Yeah, it looks sweet. It's just dirty. Dirty, dirty. I've got another set of wheels for this, too, that are brand new. Um, these ones look a little bit... I mean, the car looks like it has never been run, but the wheels are just a little bit, like, dirty, like it has been run. But whatever. It doesn't look to me like there's ever been fuel in that fuel tank, so... Super, super cool. Uh... <laughs> Kit number 43512 from 2003. So I would still call that vintage. In my book, that's vintage. Um, I wish it had a manual for the car, but it doesn't. Not the end of the world. I don't think there's one in the Japanese newspapers. So yeah, I'm just glad it finally made it here. Super neat. Like I said, even if it's just a display piece, it'll, uh, it's just cool as hell to have it. Oh, that thing, that poster comes off the front of the box. And I think it's the first expert built I have. So yeah, let me get the camera moved over for a closing and, uh, and we'll wrap this one up. Sick. Factory assembled. Expert built G. Expect two servo. Pre assembled chassis, pre painted body. I wanted to see if it said what chassis it was. Officially licensed. I don't know if it says. What does this say? Active cooling system. Cool air is taken from the inlet built in aluminum die cast. Oh, so there's an inlet at the bottom that takes in the cool air. 2.1 cc. Ah, 
uh, shaft driven four wheel drive. Doesn't really have a chassis name. TG Sports chassis. The TGS chassis. Never heard of it. You guys will have to let me know if you've ever heard of the TGS chassis. Oh, that's, well, there's one in there. Whatever. So, yeah, let me move the camera over for a closing. This video is getting boring now. <laughs> See you in a second. So, yeah, you guys will have to tell me what you think of the first Nitro RC icons. I really want a TR15T. There's a new unbox one for $1,500 on eBay. And I don't know that the price is that bad. I watched one sell new unbox. I want a new unbox one. I want to build it. I watched one sell on Baiyi and it went $1,400. So you figure shipping and you're at that price. There's one in the UK for $1,500. But I... I don't know. You can buy used ones for like $500. But then you're dealing with... Is the motor any good? All that stuff. But uh, I really want the 15T to sit next to my Dyna Blaster. Um, Tomley has one. And he's ripped it around on his channel. And the thing looks awesome. It's a cool truck. But the Nitro part of it just sucks. Um, I have a hard time with Nitro. Other people swear by it and love it. And they're able to tune it. I'm actually a, a, a wrencher too. I build motors, fix excavators. And I still just... Do not have the knack for it. It's such a pain in the ass. Excuse my language. But yeah, uh, when I saw this one, I just had to have it. It was such a good deal. And now I'm into it for 450 bucks. So there goes that deal. <laughs> so buyer beware. If you're from outside Japan, which 99% of you are, and you are shopping on Baiyi, and you want a Nitro... You're gonna have you're gonna end up dealing with this. You're gonna have to use black ship and cross your fingers and hope for the best. Um, I don't know that I would buy another nitro in Japan um, and go through what I went through. I it was a learning process, so now I know just to ship it to black ship immediately. Use FedEx Japan three day and hopefully it would do the same thing as it did the third time this one was shipped. Um, so yeah. Oh, this shows on the side that it's the X-Pac pistol grip. Not the not the dual stick, but it's got a dual stick in there. So I wonder if someone changed it over to the dual stick at some point. Not a big deal for me to throw my own receiver in anyways and ditch the crystal 27 meg. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think of Nitro. In general. I mean, Tamiya wasn't huge into it, but Kyosho, boy. Whew, right from the beginning. Glow engines back in the 70s, straight up till today. Um, so, yeah. It's a huge part of this hobby. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, I'd ask you to consider subscribing. Although my channel is basically unboxing videos right now. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm in a rough patch. It's just I've got so much going on outside the channel that was unforecasted and out of my control that this is kind of where we're at right now so it is what it is but if you are not subscribed and you would like to support the channel please hit that button turn on the notifications thumbs up thumbs down it all helps uh and until next time we'll see you soon thanks yeah.